Greetings everyone and a warm welcome to you. I can say a warm welcome from where I am here in New Zealand because we are in the midst of the end of a very very hot summer and it is particularly hot at the moment so if you're in the northern hemisphere and it's a bit chilly or cold I'll send you some warm vibes from this video. So hey guys, thank you for deciding to join me and come along and see what's in store for March for you guys for 2019. And Pisces, this is your reading. We're going to be using several different decks of cards. We'll start with the Morgan Greer and I'll pull full four of them for you. And then I'm going to then deal the other cards as well before we actually start getting into the reading. So, with no further ado, let's see what's in store. I have been doing some shuffling for you. So the intention is there, but we will see what is coming as well. So this is for Pisces for March 2019. What would we like to tell them? and the most important messages. And while we're here, we'll call in Archangel Michael and Metatron as well to see if there are any messages coming from their end too. I notice that when I do this, quite often one or another card will turn up depicting perhaps the likes of Michael or Metatron in the actual picture. And when that does happen, we often know then that they are in for the reading with a special message. So your first card is the Queen of Swords. Oh, and two came out together and they, <laughs> they are almost the brothers in arms. The Nine of Wands and the Seven of Wands. And then you have the Ten of Swords. So if we put them like that, spread them out a little bit. Now what I am doing, the next deck of cards is a, it is a full tarot deck, but it is devised from the realm of the fairies and elementals I guess if you could if you like it does have the same meanings just different depictions um, this is done by Doreen Virtue so we'll see if any of these cards replicate themselves at the moment you'd had no major arcanas turn up yet but you had the two swords and the two wands so this is for Pisces for March 2019 they're bigger cards a little more difficult to deal with the eight of autumn which is the pentacle suit so that's um we've got eight nine and seven coming through in fact we've got seven eight nine ten um and then the queen we have an ace, which is lovely, the ace of swords, so that's sort of um, very similar to the queen of swords there. We have the three of swords, so there have been a few swords coming through here for you guys, and we also have the ten of coins, so two coins, two uh, swords in this row here. Let's see, we're going to be using some other cards for uh, further confirmation of what these messages might be meaning and we will be reading down the columns as well so we will see what these ones show up as okay let's just see sort of as a clarifier Pray, that's a guardian angel. Mother, Mother Mary. Love, which is the God energy. And confidence, St. Michael, Archangel the Michael. St. Michael the Archangel, so Michael did come through anyhow. And I think for any of you that would like to utilize that energy of calling on your higher angelic vibrations or higher vibrational energy in the month of March for 
either protection or uplifting or guidance or for creating some sort of flow you can do that as well just don't forget to ask because it's quite important that you ask for help when you need it so if we're going to be reading down the columns we have the queen of swords at the top who can represent an air sign person quite literally so this could be someone in your life that you know it could be a family member uh, someone quite strong willed and determined uh, and it could be also a work person they sometimes this type of energy comes up around career and work because the swords are the air sign energy which is all to do with the mind and intellect and often that is considered to be a realm of our careers or where we're employed or things like businesses and as I said you've actually got quite a few swords in the reading so you've got one, two, three, four, two pentacles and two um, wands as well. So we saw no cups coming through, but there's talk through these other cards of relationships and emotions one way or another, even though the cups didn't turn up. So with this Queen of Swords, she could very well be someone who is around, who is playing a role in a situation or an atmosphere or some type of... Um, talks or negotiations or discussions she can be quite helpful and beneficial in terms of ideas that she can put forward that's if she's working well in a situation around you if there is any tension or animosity she can be quite the opposite and she could be very adept, adept at you know stalling processes or or preventing action from coming through so it's going to depend for each and every one of you how you perceive this person to be in what way they're interacting with you so she could be like a boss or a, a leading figure like a mentor she could even be a legal representative one way or another uh, so someone from a court or uh, like a counsellor or a mediator or litigator or an accountant as well um, when we come down to the Eight of Pentacles, that's actually usually represented as a positive card in terms of your finances. So we read what she says on here, and it says, Do more research before proceeding. Education in the form of seminars, going back to school or apprenticeships, excellent craftsmanship and long-term projects. So the Eight of Pentacles is about establishment it's about hard work it's about not giving up it's about following procedures and protocols and perhaps this queen of swords is imparting some of that energy to you in the month of march so there might be things that you are wishing would speed up or that you'd be able to you know get them through a system without too much you know fine details hankering it all down but it feels to me more like you are going to have to do a bit more research or a bit more homework or it's going to be stalled a little bit. And the other reason I say that is along this row up here, if we come back to the row, this row is a little bit arduous. All of those cards denote a little bit of hard work and tension around something. So if there's anything you've been doing, even if it's like a health project, say you've been trying to um, get fit and you've been trundling along and you've started off running two kilometers a day or two miles and you're now up to five and then you're thinking oh this is going really well and then suddenly there'll be a block you might hurt yourself or you might um, strain your ankle or you might find that your timetable is altered and you can't do the training the same so you find these frustrations can build up and you do you get like I'm, I'm cross about this how do I work my way through it well, the message from that Queen of Swords was exactly that. Do the homework, spend the time, look a little bit further, but don't give up. The Queen of Swords and the Eight of Pentacles together could almost indicate for some of you that there might be something that you do need attended to, like uh, a sore ankle or a bone or something that might end up with plaster, you know, like in plaster or with a surgical procedure possibly as well now the bottom card the prey from your guardian angel uh, praying in essence is a very high vibrational activity to uplift but the the more 
fundamental perspective of it is asking for something, asking your network of supporters, your celestial helpers for an answer or for a way forward or for them to support you. So we mentioned that very briefly um, in the very first instance and we've got Archangel Michael here who did come in for the reading and I love it when just before we started I requested them to come in and they did. So that's how sort of simple it is for any of you in any situation where you feel like you are floundering or there's not enough help or something's blocking you or you need more ideas or more energy, you ask and praying is asking. So you've had that message twice already, kind of from my end, talking about it and then the card saying it as well. So whatever it is in that column there that um, is either confronting you or you're finding it as stalling or it's uh, tiresome or burdensome, just keep going because there's light at the end of this tunnel and there is certainly going to be flow and creation coming from it eventually. We come to this next sort of um, up and down here, this column, although you know working across is also probably quite powerful as well. But we have the Nine of Wands, and the Nine of Wands is coming toward a completion of something because the Nines are nearly at the Tens. The Nine of Wands talks to us about still feeling as though you've got to constantly you know, stand up for your rights or you've got to push really hard or you've, you're trying to make other people see your perspective or understand it and it's like they have blinkers on or something or they've got cotton wool in their ears and they can't hear what you're saying. But the card says don't give up, keep going because you're nearly there. But again it talks to you a little bit about what this Eight of Pentacles did and it says keep trying, you know, look a bit further, dig a bit deeper. You've just something is missing from the end part of this project, whatever it is for you, whether it be health, whether it be relationships or love or romance or whether it be about your career or family issues, there's just a little more that you have to go to get there. And actually speaking about that, I'm doing this reading on February the 11th, and so we're coming up to the week of Valentine's. You know, this week has Valentine's Day in it. And Valentine's Day, apart from the fact that some people don't like it because it's become very, you know, commercial, the art of Valentine's Day is the art of love. And so to imbue love in your week, if you can, even no matter when you're listening to this video, by imbuing love into all of your situations, you warm them up, you nurture them, you activate them, you allow them uh, expansiveness and new energy to come in, new positive energy. So remember that too, anything that is troubling you or that you feel a blockage in, apply love to it and you will find it kind of like it's like putting a piece of wood on the fire it helps it to expand it helps it to glow again and it helps it to speed up and get back on to continuing the slow burn the ace of winter under this nine um, talks about well i'll read what she says let's have a look don't be deterred by challenges along the way. It is important to communicate clearly and accurately. Amazing new ideas that should be implemented. And I've just basically said everything that this Ace of um, Swords is talking about. So don't be deterred by the challenges and keep going and there are new ideas coming. The Aces are positive, but the Ace of Swords is the least positive, if you like, of them. It comes with a challenge, and it comes usually after you have been fighting for something, but you are getting to the apex of the success and being able to move forward into the new direction. So I sometimes see the Ace turn up when we see things such as divorce papers coming through or this legal separation of a business entity. So you might have been in business with a partner and the, part, uh, the business went for sale and the partnership is now finally uh, being you know, broken up through the legal perspective and the monies are paid out and divided out, things like that. Sometimes it can be when the house has been sold and you eventually get the final payout. 
it can be it's success for going in a new direction at the cost of something that has been going on beforehand. The fact that the mother card came out this could be another indication to uh, uplift the energies of Mother Mary and when I talked before a little bit about love and thinking it was Valentine's Day week this week and I asked you to imbue the energies of love into any situation I think this is a double message of love because Mother Mary exhumed love uh, she was the epitome of deep caring nurturing love of the heart unconditional love and especially love for children so for some of you there will be like a direction in here that is referring to family matters and to mothers or children whether it's your mother that we're referring to or like a mother-in-law or a grandmother or whether you are the mother of children so somehow some of these things that we're talking about here could be related to family matters and some of you might have had a challenging perspective or issue that has been going on that's affected you at the heart matter that is dealing with families one way or another and that it is coming to an end and to remember to apply love to it and healing I think love and healing so don't give up just keep going on the pathway forward and we we all know that sometimes in life there are more difficult situations that we have to walk through and they are much more trying tribulations and they take far longer to get from A to B and halfway along the way we can think oh my god I, I can't keep going I'm going to give up but the real destination is not the giving up it's getting to the other side which enables us to start a new destination so if we don't follow through and push to the end of situations and you know move the obstacles aside and learn from them then we remain in like a groundhog day a glitch period and those glitches in life can often be the things that create more depression or anxiety or sadness or loss so empowering ourselves to create the energy to move forward is very, very important, no matter what it is that we're looking at. So we move to this one. Oh, and of course we've got the love energy as well, which I talked about the week of love. So we have the seven of wands at the top. And of course they are kind of brothers in arms. There's just the number eight missing in between, the, the, the one of the triplets. They're very similar energy in real terms. So um, the seven is just reiterating that same message from the nine. So we're still moving through March with this feeling of, you, it's almost like a little bit of angst, especially from those top cards. And even some of the ones in the middle row from the tarot are a little anxious as well. But the, the underlying message beneath it is don't give up. Just keep going. Whatever it is that you're not finding either fulfillment or that something's not flowing right or whether it's come to yet yeah, it's stuck or it's lacking cohesiveness or you're lacking ideas or creative ability to get it back on flow just look further dig deeper move things aside create new energy paradigms fling some stuff out get rid of some things bring something new in extrapolate the positives out extrapolate possibilities think beyond the square box think beyond the realms it's all about creativeness when the wands are there and it's about pulling on your experiences and your ideas and bringing them into the now to get them to work so the three of swords underneath says reach out to others for comfort and love and there's the word love right beneath it you will grow stronger from this situation sadness that will heal with time so there can be a little bit of sadness tinged with the ace of swords the three of swords and then the ten of swords up the top so you're not the first one for the reading for the month that's got a little bit of yeah I don't know what it is just a little bit of sadness in it I'm wondering if March globally is going to have some unusual 
you know, energy flow through it, and it could be due to planetary lineups, or it could be due to some some event that happens. I'll have to wait until I do more of the readings to find out. But I'm thinking March seems to be a month that tests quite a lot of people and puts energies out there that we have to really stand up to work through and to push against, you know, to not give up, to feel strong, to reignite ourselves, I think is a good one. That Three of Winter, which is the Three of Swords, it's a beautiful depiction on that card with the beautiful brown bear and the old wizard and the young girl with the ice swords. It can represent a broken heart, it can represent the feeling of a loss in a close relationship and sometimes even a love relationship. It can also be physical pain around the health. It could be people you know who have heart health problems. It could be yourself. So this could be a really good time to indulge in a checkup, to make dietary changes, to look at a keep fit regime. Things like that can be very helpful when this Three of Swords turns up. But the clarifier underneath it, or the other message underneath it, is the love card. And it's the God energy. And love is often the most helpful thing that we can add to any situation or that we can call upon. Love is the penultimate energy. It's what we are here to experience. It's what we crave at, at every level. When we apply love to situations, even situations that we aren't happy about, it heals faster, it moves quicker. We have less anger, we have less resentment, less frustration. There's just more positivity all around. And remember, as I said, this is the week of love. And so take that beautiful energy of love and apply it to any situation here for you that may be causing worry or doubt or feelings of lack or loss. There is also the possibility that for some of you that perhaps you decide to leave a certain situation behind which is the Three of Swords and it gives you a temporary feeling of sadness but then there is this bounty of love around you. You've got the Mother Mary love, you've got the God love, you've got the beautiful positive energy of praying. So there's all sorts of possibilities in that column that add up to feeling better about a situation and allowing positivity to shine in, to change it or to upgrade it or to move on from it. So we come to this last one and we see two tens in a row. So when you get two numbers that are the same, then we know there's something going on. You can pay more heed to it as well. The tens are the end of a cycle, the end of completion. So that ten of swords often has a very different energy to the ten of pentacles. So the ten of swords is one of uh, feeling defeated, feeling deflated, feeling at a loss, hurt, a little bit like the three of swords diagonally down here. It can be referenced when something such as an unexpected backstabbing from someone occurs and you think, why? Why did that happen? I didn't deserve it. What's going on? Um, and it can sometimes be someone who has been close to you, such as a friend or a close work colleague, and you feel that they have um, mistreated you and you've also, they've abused a trust, if you like. So if this happens to you and it's that type of situation, know that the 10 is walking you into a new beginning like an ace, that the 10s are the end of the cycle and if this is, was happening to you because of someone else, they weren't worth having in your life, they were betraying you anyhow, they weren't your best friend, they didn't have your back, well they did with swords and they were stabbing it. So. It can be very, very difficult to move on from situations like this. And we, we can find these are our darkest days, you know, the dark night of the soul type thing. This can even be something like your long-term romantic partner and you feel let down by them. The overall outcome for the card is positive because it allows you to pick yourself up, to change direction, to understand that it was unbalanced and to move forward with what? With confidence. With Archangel Michael. He gives you confidence 
always. He gives you support. He gives you ideas and energy. And he bolsters you. And he's holding that sword really high. Like the Ace of Swords. You know, go forth with light and energy. And take all of these bottom cards. And challenge yourself. And answer the questions. And resolve the issues. And find the energy for the month. And you will be surprised at how March will take you marching into April with more confidence, with more love, with more resolve and probably more answers as well. The last card that we've yet to address is the Ten of Pentacles. It says, take steps to ensure the financial security of your children or other loved ones making wise investments or planning for retirement, honouring family traditions. It's, a, it's considered a very good card and it, it's usually quite good for financial realms, although in this card she does say take steps to ensure your financial security of your children in particular, um, making wise investments and planning for retirement. So perhaps some of you are learning something from this up here and you are going to be more cautious or be more careful or um, change the way you've been investing. That Ten of Swords up there could even be around something like that, around a financial situation such as your career. You may have been investing heavily in your career options and planning a retirement from that and then there's this sudden change that goes on. This talk down that whole column of feeling defeated for one reason or another at the top, then having to perhaps retrace some steps or reorganize some financial aspects in your life, and then understanding that you are being given the confidence to do this and to take away any deflation and replace it with the energy of confidence. So I think, guys, it's quite an intense reading in many ways. There's certainly a lot of messages that have come through for you. And, of course, because this is a general reading, it will be different for how each and every one of you feel into this and what you particularly, you know, attracted to in the perspective of the messages that come in. But do also pick up your own intuitive messages from the card. And I think that's, or from the cards, that's really important because while you are watching and listening, something might just twigger, <laughs> twigger, <laughs> that's a, like a new word, something might twigger in the back of your mind and you'll go, wow, yeah, I, I'm looking at that card and I'm really getting a feeling about a certain aspect or perspective or dynamic that I could be or should be doing or following. And take heed of that advice from yourself. So anyhow, everyone, thank you very much for tuning in and listening. And I do wish you the very best for March ahead. And remember to join me for April's as well. So take care, everyone. Have a wonderful March. Please sub the channel and push the notifications button. And that way you will receive any of the videos that I upload. Thanks, guys. Much love. Namaste.